thinking about uh, at about 9.30 last night, <laughs> <laughs> what we were going to speak on, what we were going to talk about, I, I, there were a couple different things, but most, I think, that came front, forefront is, is Ezekiel, chapter 37, so I think that's where we're going to be. Um, a couple weeks ago, on uh, Wednesday night prayer, the Lord had really started stirring in me Ezekiel and the, the Valley of the Dry Bones and how that kind of applied to us. And so let's go ahead, let's turn there and let's read Ezekiel chapter 37. So I do have to get there. Thank you. And I am going to be using my electronic uh, bibble. So uh, it'll take just a minute for it to catch up here. In this, in, when I did a little bit of study, because I did pull up some things on Ezekiel, um, the first, the, the scholars and the commentaries talk about that, that, that Ezekiel is a picture of the children of Israel. Their death, burial, and resurrection and brought back into the fold of, of uh, God's family. And so I thought, well, that's, that's good. That's interesting. I like that. Pull this up. And, and, and it does. You can see how that, um, it's not this one. you can see uh, at the very beginning how God is speaking to uh, Ezekiel, and so I'm going to be reading out of the Amplified, and it says, The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley. And it was full of dry bones, and he caused me to pass round about among them. And behold, there were very many human bones in the open valley or plain, and behold, they were very dry. Even if you take this piece right here, and he's out in this valley, and you're seeing all these bones, this word very dry is really about they were sun parched. They had been there a while. They had been affected by the atmosphere. So I know that we're, we're looking at the children of Israel, but I think also that this can apply to us. And that's where the Lord was going when I this Wednesday night when he had been laying this on my heart. It's like in the midst of the valley, if you look at that, the atmosphere had affected those bones. And when we're in our walk as Christians, we're out in the valley, we're at school, or we're in our workplace, or the marketplace, wherever we're going, even in our neighborhood, the, the effects of the world, the atmosphere, the things around us, have a tendency to parch our bones. Amen? I mean, no matter how, where we're at in the Lord, there are things that are constantly affecting and buffeting us, right? Even, you know, even myself, I think, God, you know, how do I get distracted? How do I get so caught up in this instead of really focusing on this? Because this is where I need to focus, not on what's going on in the world, because if I focus on him, he's going to take care of it. So here we see these people, these bones were there. They were very dry. They were parched. And he said to me, God said to Ezekiel, son of man, can these bones live? Can these bones live? And I answered, oh Lord God, you know. When I look at my life, if he asks me, can these bones live? God, you know, I can say yes, but you only know. There's nothing that I can do to make my spiritual person, my spiritual man, live. That is, that is a work that he does in me. If, as I seek him, he's going to do that work in me, and then I look, let's, let's look at Capital City Church. Can this live? God, you know. You have a plan, and you have a purpose.
for Capital City Church. You planted it here way before we came. You had a plan and a purpose. You know. And then I look at Capital City Church in Madison or in Dane County, and I say, can these dry bones? Because not only is it us as believers, but there are non-believers, those that have not accepted Christ yet, that are out in, in the midst of Madison. Can those dry bones live? Can they be affected? God says to us, can these dry bones here live? And I answer, Lord, you know. You're the one who knows from the beginning and the end. And again, let's look at verse 4. God said, and he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, Oh, you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath and spirit to enter you, and you shall live. Think about Adam and Eve. Adam was this body that he had created, and he breathed into him the breath of life. He breathed the spirit into him. Say to these dry bones, Behold, I will cause breath and spirit to enter you, and you shall live. We live because when we become born again, our spirit becomes alive again because the spirit now comes and abides in us. That's the same for those that are around us as well. So when I was thinking about that that Wednesday night, God was saying to us, prophesy to the city of Madison. Prophesy to those that are around us. You hear the word of the Lord. You hear the word of the Lord. He will cause breath and spirit to enter you and shall live. God continues and says, now you think about, just get picture in your mind all those bones just lay in there. He says, and I will lay sinews upon you and bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin. And I will put breath and spirit in you. And you dry bones shall live. And you shall know, understand, and realize that I am the Lord the sovereign ruler who calls forth loyalty and obedience service. So God's speaking not only to us, but to every, every person here in this city and in Dane County. He is going to bring those bones together. He's going to bring together and put the tendons and the ligaments and the muscles and bring upon it the flesh. And he is going to breathe life. And if you think about what's been happening for those that have been here for just a little bit, what's happening in the city of Madison is that's exactly what he's doing. It's not just Capital City Church, but it's all of the, the, the houses of God that are here, all of the families that gather. There is such a mighty move upon just the local pastors and the churches being in unity. And just remember, what does unity bring? If, if they see unity in us, they're going to know God. They're going to know Jesus. They're going to see him. So that's happening. He's bringing all of these things together. And there are people that are coming to know him in, a, in, in many different ways, standing up, coming to life, being who they're supposed to be in Christ. So when we look at verse 7, Ezekiel was obedient. That's always a challenge sometimes for us, isn't it? To be obedient when he tells us. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a thundering noise. And behold, a shaking and trembling and rattling. And the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews upon the bones, and flesh came upon them, and skin covered them over, and there was no breath or spirit in them, just as God had said, right? So he's bringing things together. The bones are coming together. Things are being built. The, the muscles and the flesh is there. 
But just as Adam was there until God breathed into him the breath of life, the spirit, there was no life there. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath and the spirit, in verse 9. Prophesy to the breath and the spirit, son of man, and say to the breath and spirit, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath and spirit, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he had commanded me. And the breath and the spirit came into the bones, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great host. I think about what I, just when I was hearing that call of four winds, right? How windy it was on Friday. We were just talking about the breeze and how, just picture this, okay? In, in Acts, when the Holy Spirit came, a mighty rushing wind, they heard it. I can almost picture that same mighty rush, same spirit, same spirit here as it was in Acts. That that breath coming in, the Holy Spirit coming in, and things stirring. Can you can you picture? Amen. Just watching, I watched the pine tree outside my my window and how it just whooshed back and forth, and how that that must be what this had been like. I know that this is a vision, and I know that Ezekiel is seeing this in the spirit. But that's got to be. Almost, think about it, they're in a valley, there's probably a lot of sand, there might have been a, 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 you know, a dust funnel that may have stirred up, there might have been leaves or grass and everything flowing around, and the mighty sound of those bones coming to life. They lived and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great host. Then he said to me, Son of Man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are completely cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open up your graves and cause you to come out, come up out of your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back home in the land of Israel. Now, I know that this is speaking specifically to the children of Israel, but we have been grafted into the family. We've been grafted into the vine. We're part of God's family. And he's saying to us, if we say to him, now I know I've, I've cried out and I've, it has gotten really dry from time to time, working and doing the things that he's called us to do here. God, only you know if these dry bones are going to live. Only you know if these things are going to come to life. If the things that we're doing are going to accomplish. But this speaks volumes because he is going to do it. Our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are completely cut off. It feels like that sometimes, doesn't it? In our own lives even. Not just as the congregation, but in our own lives. It feels like we just get up in the morning we go to work, we clean the house, we do the things that we have, whatever it is that we do, and our daily routine is over and over and over, and it feels, we feel so isolated sometimes. But remember that God has a plan, and he's calling us to do something here in Madison that nobody else can do. There's a specific work that we have. Black Hawk has their specific group. You know, each house has a calling, a specific area that we're supposed to be ministering to. Verse 12. Therefore prophesy and says, Behold, I'm going to open the graves and cause you to come up out of your graves, O my people, and bring you back home. There is going to be a mighty move. Those dead, dry bones, those dead, dry people that are basically in the grave, they're, they're held in captivity. They are going to be moved upon. The Holy Spirit is going to bring them back to life. That's what he's telling us. And you shall know that I am the Lord, your sovereign ruler, when I have opened your graves and caused you to come up out of your graves, O my people. And I shall put my spirit in you, and you shall live. And I shall place you in your own land, 
Then you shall know and understand and realize that the Lord, I the Lord, have spoken it and performed it. The word of the Lord came to me again, saying, Son of man, take a stick and write on it. What I want us to do this morning is I really want us to lay down, lay down what we think what we think is supposed to happen. And I want us to listen to what God is saying to us. We are in a valley of dry bones. Sometimes our lives feel that way. We get affected by the world around us. Madison and Dane County, our neighbors, our workplaces, our school rooms, wherever we're at, is a valley of dry bones, and he's saying, prophesy to them. Call them out. They will live. He is going to be pulling together a mighty army. God is doing things here at Capital City. He's brought Brad and Crystal. Andy, right now, is making plans. Andrew and Rachel are making plans to come back here in June to join, to work, to minister to the international community that's here on campus. God is putting in place every important piece in order to minister to the city of Madison to call out, to bring in the fold, to, to cause a mighty army to be raised up and, call, and, and brought to life. Amen. God brought Labish, right? You, I, think, I think he did. You came and, and you felt like this is where you needed to stay, right? Diamond has become a part of, of the, the congregation, you know, to join us to fight. Rajiv and Hepzibah believe that this is exactly where they're supposed to be. God has brought them here as well. And so what I would say this morning is let's seek God. The, the one who knows, will these dry bones live? God, only you know. Ask him, what part do I have in this army? What part do you want me to take up? What should I prophesy? What should I speak out to the people that are around us when I'm praying, when I'm walking the neighborhood, when I'm in the marketplace? Seek him. He's going to tell you exactly what he wants you to do. No longer is this place going to be full of dry bones. No longer are we going to be affected necessarily by the exposure to the atmosphere? I'm just kind of looking through these, these notes that I have. So this morning, you know, what when we spoke on Wednesday night when we went over this, there were just some little pieces that came that the Lord was speaking, that the Holy Spirit was speaking to everyone that was here. So this morning, what thoughts has the Holy Spirit been laying on your heart with this scripture verse? Is there any, is there anything that God was speaking to you about Ezekiel 37? Well, that is we surrender ourselves to him, no matter what we thought was dead and dying, because the devil tries to, God gives each of us talents. Yes. You know, some yes. might get two, some might get one, some might get ten. But all of us get our talents. And the devil tried to convince us that we don't have any talents. And he tried to make us think that our talents are no longer any good. So we think it's dead or dying. Yes. To me, God is saying this morning is that the thing that I gave you is the same thing that he's going to use to revive us and to show us that he lives. Amen. Amen. Exactly. Anyone else? 